You know, Nia, it, it just brings to my mind, it, it, it's a national embarrassment. I mean, who cares how strong our economy is or how strong our military is if Americans are killing Americans like this over and over and over again, Nia? No, I, I think that's right. Only in America. This is a, a unique problem uh, to this uh, time in American history where you have this proliferation of guns. You can talk about mental health. You can talk about video games all you want. But as Wes pointed out, uh, certainly there are mental health issues in other countries. There are video games uh, in other countries uh, as well. And the other unique part of this era is Trump's rhetoric on race, his rhetoric about black uh, and brown people and the Republican parties. Uh, uh, unwillingness to really talk about it and, and in some ways really pick up that language. You, if you look at John Cornyn's uh, Twitter feed, for instance, some of the language in his Twitter feed mirrors some of the language uh, in, in that manifesto uh, from the, the killer in, in El Paso. So that is problematic. You know, David Urban has a, a lot to say about Congress and what Congress needs to do. I wonder if he has any advice for what the president should do in terms of, of his language, talking about Mexicans uh, as killers, talking about Mexicans uh, as rapists, talking about Baltimore, uh, talking about African countries yeah, but, uh, yeah. in a dis disparaging way. So, you know, all fine and good that, that he wants Congress to come together and, and sort of clean up their act and address uh, gun control. But but listen, I mean, yeah, the president uh, also has a responsibility, I think most Americans agree, uh, to not be so disparaging, to, to not be so disparaging towards black people, towards brown people uh, in the way that we've seen him do time and time again, endless, countless examples okay. of him. Uh, really, I think, inciting uh, this sort of rhetoric at his rallies. And again, we saw it in that manifesto with this uh, killer pointing out the, Trump's own rhetoric. Hey, Nia, Nia, Nia to be fair, you be, should be fair to me. Of the United you, you, States you know, go to rallies in which people. Right. Let, let's let David respond if we the can. The President Congress of the United will. States. Yeah. So, so, Nia. Okay. Sure. Nia, sure. I, I think to be fair to me, you should, you should recognize that I do call the president out each and every time. And every one of those instances you talk about, I've said it, it, the president should not do that. It is not, it's not helpful, it's not right, and I call him out each and every time. So I think you should be fair and acknowledge that. And, 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 you, and you realize I think it's time. Go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Del Luis. I think it's time that, I think, it, I think it's time to stop talking. Uh, look, that's good that you call the president out. It's time to turn your back on this president. It's time to abandon and stop supporting oh, this con president. Con because Congressman, as long you, you, as you, you, people you. do that, he will continue to speak to these issues. Yes, in America, sometimes you have to take on your own leader. And I know what you're going to say, that we should do the same thing. Well, guess what? When Barack Obama refused to keep his promise on immigration, Democrats are the ones that took him on, called him deporter in chief, and had him change his ways. People within the party had to take the president of the United States on. We did it in the past. We need to do it in the future today. This Look, the majority of people in America, in two polls, two nationally registered polls, a majority of people, how sad it is, believe the president of the United States is a racist. That's not me. That's I stand with the majority of the people of the United States of America. That's a sad commentary when the majority of people believe this president is a racist, a racist president of the United States of America. Uh, just a moment now. We have a reaction from Congressman Tim Ryan uh, from Ohio and, of course, also a Democratic uh, candidate for president. You, you may have noticed that when the president concluded his amar remarks, yeah. He seemed to reference the wrong city. Of course, the shooting was in Dayton, but he said he Toledo. Did, yeah. That is right. Tim, Tim Ryan's response, Toledo, F me. Uh, John Avalon, a, a moment where the president, John Avalon, uh, where the president yeah. uh, didn't seem to have specific knowledge of where this tragedy, nine dead people, actually took place in the state of Ohio. The wrong city in Ohio. And presumably, I mean, you got to imagine that's not in the teleprompter. Um, I understand Tim Ryan's frustration from the great city of Youngstown, Ohio. Uh, these cities are not fungible, but it's about what emotional mark did this massacre make in your heart and in your mind? And then does it, can you bother, be bothered to remember the right city's name? And then can you focus on the real underlying issue? In the history of mass shootings we've had in this country, and there have been far too many for far too long, what's new is the introduction of white nationalist terrorism that is on the rise in America. And the president checked the box by mentioning it. 
but he's got to do more than that. Yeah. He's got to lead. You know, Mitch McConnell said that criminal justice reform was dead. President Trump used his political power to get that passed. Is he going to show the same kind of sustained leadership, or is this just going to be another speech undercut by a tweet hours, if not days later? David Irvin, I get that people make poppy mistakes. Two, poppy two. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jim. To, to John's point, I was just going to say, to John's point, in fairness, the president uttered words and phrases that he had not yet, one being condemning, condemning white supremacy and also calling this domestic terrorism. And th those are important steps because those were words that people were hoping to hear yesterday, calling on the president to call out uh, definitively. And he did do that there. And I think credit where credit is due, in fairness. It's very important to hear it over and over again for exactly what it is. You're right, Jim, echoing what his own FBI director, Christopher Ray, said uh, very loudly uh, in July. Uh, David Urban, your, your response to that, hearing it from the president, the question becomes what happens with action? And then to the Toledo thing, I get that people make mistakes, but Dayton, Ohio has just suffered a huge massacre and the president didn't seem to know where that took place in a state that he says he is so representative of. Listen, I, I, the, 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 the Toledo Dayton, it's regrettable. I'm sure it's a, it's, a, it's a slip up. I'm sure the president is well aware that it took place in Dayton and not Toledo. To the, to the, to the, the previous point you made about the president calling out white supremacists and uh, this hate crime and this terrible uh, scourge that is, a, that, is a, that is affecting our nation. Look, I, I, I think I heard him say that he's asked the Attorney General and the FBI to kind of, kind of focus on it and crack down. I suspect you will see it. Furthermore, it, it, this is something that obviously ravages America. Mm -hmm. Look, no one in America is proud that this is happening on our shores. Timothy McVeigh blew up you know, the Myriad uh, Federal Office Building in Goldman City. It's a, it's a terrible thing. We, we should we should attack it just like we attack ISIS. Should be just as big a focus. Mm -hmm. Internal internal terrorism and, and look, our law should be fixed. There there are numerous problems with you know FBI the their their powers what they can and can't do with terrorism on our own shores. That should be all be eliminated to make sure that Americans are safe in their homes, are safe in their places of worship, are safe when they go to shop, and don't have to fear these type of things. There th yeah. there are gaps in our laws that need to be re remedied. And those should be same. remedied. Sure. Nia, uh, we're hearing from but other, sure, at the same time uh, from other, the from president. other. Go ahead, Congressman. We watched the president of we watched the president of the United States go to a rally, and the audience was there, and they started chanting, "Send her home, send her back." And then the president the next day said, oh, I, I didn't tell him to say that. He actually stepped away from it. And I said, wow, maybe he's seen something. Maybe he's walking away. Maybe he's going to change course. And you saw what happened one day later. One day later, he was like, hey, I can't control. Maybe they'll say it again. So we've watched this president. He cannot stop. He knows only one way, one avenue, one road to the re-election, to his re-election as president of the United States. And that is to continue to pit us one against the other and to continue his vitriolic, ugly, xenophobic language, hateful language against immigrants. He's not going to change. He's not going to change. And the Congress of the United States is not going to unchain themselves from the NRA. Until we do that, we will not save America and make it a better place and safer place. Nia, I'd like to get your reaction to Senator Booker, Senator Cory Booker, who has his main issue in this campaign has been gun control. And he's even called out some of his fellow Democratic contenders for the presidency for not going far enough, he thinks, on gun licenses, for example. His campaign manager just tweeted what Cory Booker, what Senator Cory Booker just wrote, calling it a BS, such a BS soup of ineffective words as he listens to the president, we should quickly condemn his lack of a real plan. Nia. Well, you know, I think the president has made his feelings on all of this known for the last uh, many years. I mean, in, in some ways, this uh, speech was superfluous. I don't think it's going to uh, remain in terms of any sort of focus on any of the issues he, he talked about, whether it's white supremacy, whether it's gun control, whether it's uh, mental health, wh whether it's video games. I mean, this was a speech that he sort of felt like he had to yeah. give. Uh, there was a big mm. void there. I don't think anybody was really clamoring necessarily to hear from the president on any of these.
these issues uh, because we know where he stands on these issues. Uh, we, we know what he has seen uh, or what he's talked about when he talks about uh, immigrants coming to this country. We have heard him talk about uh, an invasion. We've heard him talk about killers uh, and rapists. So the idea that now uh, he can talk about white supremacists uh, in one speech in the Oval Office, I don't think he's going to use his bully pulpit to go after white supremacists in the way that he has gone uh, after immigrants. Uh, you, you know, I'd be surprised if, if, he, if he, he goes at white supremacists with the same sort of vigor uh, he's gone after other folks in, in this country. So, you know, I, I didn't really expect much from this speech. I don't think it has much staying power. I think what does have staying power is what we've seen from this president already in his speeches, yeah. on his Twitter account. Uh, and, and we've seen in many ways Republicans either through their silence or through their echoing his mm -hmm. words uh, as well, essentially rally around this president and the ways uh, he wants to be racially uh, divisive. And we see the ways in which uh, it really matters right. in this country and the ways it can it lead to violence.